Hi there, welcome to this quick guide on Neon Space Rain Meter. If your menu skin doesn't look exactly like mine, you are probably using an older version of Neon Space. I will add a link to Neon Space download page in the video description. After installing Neon Space, you should have the menu skin automatically loaded. If that is not the case, head over to your system tray and right click on the rain meter icon. Click on manage from the context menu. This should open up rain meter manager. Now search for neon space settings and double click option. In neon space, skins are grouped into tabs. You can find these tabs on the top section of the menu skin. Each tab contains different types of skins grouped by category. The menu skin when loaded will always display the general tab. This tab contains the global neon space settings. The general tab is divided into right and left sections. On the left are the settings name and on the right are the actual settings button. The first setting is the transparency box. You can change the transparency of every skin in Neon Space Rain Meter using this box. Values range from 0 for fully transparent to 255 for fully opaque. Neon Space mainly uses 5 different colors. You can change this by entering a custom color for each box. If you notice the skins take some time to refresh after you change a setting, that is normal and is because the menu skin is a large file and thus takes some time to load or refresh. Next, we will set up the weather. Click on the weather box and you will be redirected to mapcoordinates.net. Enter your city in the search bar and select your city from the drop-down list. Now copy your latitude and return to the menu skin. Click on latitude and paste your latitude in the input bar on the top right corner of the menu skin. Do the same for your longitude. If you are using neon space in English, you don't have to change the weather language, as it is already set to English by default. If you want a different language, right click on the languages box and it will open up a web page. Find your country on this page and copy your language code. Now left click on the languages box again and input your language code. Don't forget to always hit the enter key on your keyboard each time you enter a value in the input bar. Finally, select a weather scale for your weather. The next setting is the time format. Select between 24 hours or 12 hours. To allow Rainmeter to retrieve data from your Gmail account, you first need to switch on the allow less secure apps permission. Return to the menu skin and enter your account name without the at gmail.com part. Also, enter your password. Your data is stored locally on your PC and is used by Rainmeter to return the number of unread messages you have. For your Wi-Fi settings, enter your maximum download speed and your maximum upload speed into the max down and max up boxes respectively. If you don't know what your max internet speeds are, click on the Wi-Fi box and it will open up speedtest.net. Run a speed test and copy your download and upload speeds. Enter them into the max down and max up boxes. Note, the values have to be in megabyte. Enter just the number without the megabyte. Speedfan is a system monitoring utility that we have to download and install to enable Rainmeter to read our system temperatures. Click on the Speedfan box to open Speedfan's download page. Download and install Speedfan from this page. After installing Speedfan, launch it and you should have a window like mine. From this window, we need to locate our GPU, CPU, and disk drive temperatures. Note that for Rainmeter to read the first value, you need to input 0 in Rainmeter instead of 1. For the second value, you will need to input 1 instead of 2 and so on. 
In my case, my GPU is the first value on speed fan, so I will input 0 for GPU in rain meter. My hard disk is the second value in speed fan, so I will input 1 in rain meter. And finally my CPU, which is the core 0, is the fifth value on speed fan, so I will input 4 for it in rain meter. Don't forget to select a temperature scale. Our next setting is for image magic. Without image magic, the glow skins won't function as intended, thus you have to install it properly. Click on the image magic box, and it should open its download page. On this page, download the latest version of image magic. Install it and make sure add application directory to your system path is checked. Here is a screenshot of how the glow skins look with image magic on the left and without image magic on the right. Select your audio player from the available list. You can also track your browser playback with the Spotify YouTube SoundCloud box. For this to work, you will have to add the RainMeter Web Now Playing Companion extension to your browser. It is available for Chrome and Firefox. Search Web Now Playing Companion on Google and install it. Our last setting is the skin language. Select your languages from the available ones. English is the default language for Neon Space Rain Meter. Neon Space contains some dock skins. You can edit them through the menu skin. Let's look at the Glow Link skin as an example. You will find boxes numbered from 1 to 6 next to the Glow Link Skin toggle box. The first row will edit the link's name, while the second row will edit the actual link. You will find other launcher and dock skins in Neon Space, they can be edited similarly. If you are not sure what a button does in Neon Space, simply hover your mouse above it, and a pop-up box will appear providing you with some details. Some skins in Neon Space will have a dedicated menu skin. To activate this menu, search for a gear icon on the skin and click on it. Most of the skins in the board tab will have dedicated menus. The only other skin with a dedicated menu that isn't in the board tab is the info skin located in the normal tab. Here are some examples of settings you can edit in this menu. Most skins in the border tab can be further customized through their dedicated menu skin. You can add details to the skin and also change their border type. You can play around with these settings to see what they do. Here is another tip. If you want to move a skin to a specific position, but it won't let you do so due to its bounds, you can fix this by right-clicking on the skin, go to Settings, and uncheck the Keep on Screen box. If you accidentally move the skin off-screen, you can bring it back by clicking on Active Skins on RainMeter Manager 
and selecting the off-screen skin. Next, change its coordinates to 00. Thank you for watching.